You're listening to the QuickBook Reviews podcast. Brighten your day with a book. Hello, my fellow bookworms. This is Philippa from QuickBook Reviews, author interviews and book reviews. How are you doing today? My goodness, I have not been well at all. So this is quite a different episode. I'm recording this late and it's going to be a short episode because your girls had whooping cough. Can you believe that? Oh, it's not nice at all. It really isn't. But thank goodness they got some very special antibiotics that really help. So once it was diagnosed, it, it I definitely started to improve. But yes, your girl's not been well. And unfortunately, it meant that I couldn't do the interview this week. So I need to tell you all about the books. But I need to particularly tell you about one book because the author was all ready to be interviewed and I had to cancel it. And I feel so bad about that. So what books are we featuring today? This is all good things. This episode, apart from whooping cough, is all about the good things. We have got City on Fire by Graham Bartlett. And it was Graham that was supposed to be interviewed. Then we've got At the Table by Claire Powell. We've got A Bookshop of One's Own by Jane Chongley and Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont by Elizabeth Taylor. And we've got a jigsaw puzzle. Yes, all the good things. So let's get stuck in straight away to City on Fire by Graham Bartlett. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this book. This is in the series, the Chief Superintendent Joe Howe series. I've had Graham on before and really enjoyed the books. And this is the latest one. And as I say, let me tell you a little bit about it. After losing her sister to an overdose, Chief Superintendent Jo Howe is desperate to tackle the world of drugs that consumes the shadowy back streets of Brighton. Operation Eradicate is her response, but not everyone sees this as a positive development. Billionaire Sir Ben Campbell views it as a threat to his business. His colossal empire relies on addicts who survive on their substitute drugs. With connections in the highest levels of government, media and organised crime, Sir Ben unleashes a brutal counterattack on Jo. The question is, how will she survive being caught in the line of fire? As I say, I'm so sorry, huge apologies to Graham that I couldn't do the interview for this. And I'm recording this much later than planned when I have recovered somewhat from it. I'll keep stopping to cough, but you won't hear that. You don't want to hear a whooping cough, definitely. Um, But it's a shame I couldn't interview Graham because I really enjoyed this book. It's full pace. It's full on. He's not one of these authors that say, I really care about my characters, so I'm not going to put them in danger. There is danger everywhere for, for poor Jo. She can't do right for doing wrong. And it was interesting to read as well that some of the scenarios that he puts Jo through and the initiative was something that Graham had done when he was in the police as well. So I really commend, if you like a crime series, if you like line of duty, so you like more the police procedural side of things, then I think you would really enjoy these books because they are, they're first rate. And Graham is someone, the other authors who are writing crime books who need to get their facts straight. They contact Graham and get his help. So he is a man who, first of all, knows how the police work. So you can't read this book and say, I find that very hard to believe. And also he knows how to write a book. And yeah, it's just a series that goes from strength to strength. So I'm really sorry that I didn't get to interview Graham. Graham, huge apologies, but uh, hopefully people will still find out more about your book. So that's City on Fire by Graham Bartlett. Now, the next one is a book that I had had for ages, but I was lying on the bed feeling very sorry for myself. And I just thought, I'm just going to reach the first book I can find. And it literally was this, At the Table by Claire Powell. And I had originally picked it up because for two reasons. The first one, on the cover, there is a woman who has face planted a pudding. I think it's a cheesecake, I'm not sure. But she has face planted it. She's fully in there. And I just loved that. It made me think, right, this is going to be a good book. And then also I had heard Claire be interviewed by Simon Mayo on his Books of the Year podcast. And I think this is going back about 12 months. 
And so I, again, got it on the back of that, thought it sounded interesting and not actually read it. So I read it this week and I'm so glad I did. I loved it. And when often I put on social media what book I'm currently reading and the number of people that said, oh, I love that book. It's one of my favourites. So it just goes to show it wasn't just me. Let me tell you a little bit about this. Uh, To Nicole and Jamie Maguire, their parents seem the ideal couple. So when Linda and Jerry announce that they've decided to separate, the news sends shockwaves through the siblings' lives, forcing them to confront their own desires. Following each member of the Maguire family over a tumultuous year of lunches, dinners and drinks, at the table is a gripping yet tender depiction of love and disillusionment, exploring what it means to grow up both as an individual and as a family. I absolutely love this book and it's one I'm going to be recommending. It, in a way, not much happens and yet in another way so much does because it's about how the family works. So it's a very different book to the Graham Bartlett one I've just talked about, which is all action. This is all just the sort of the feelings and the emotions of the family, how they cope um, with the split of the parents. I loved it. Clearly, Claire Claire Powell can write brilliantly. Claire, I want to hear what your next book is because I thought this was absolutely sensational. Very, very, very good. And when I was listening to the interview of Claire on Books of the Year podcast, she was asked about a book that she's loved, read recently and loved. And she said this one, Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont by Elizabeth Taylor. And I had never heard of this book. And so I thought, I'm going to get that. And the library had it. So I was like, right, I I have to read this book. It's set in, it was written in 1972. And Sarah Waters is quoted as saying, an author of great subtlety, great compassion and great depth. So I thought, well, if Sarah Waters likes this book, then I think I need to read it. It's a short book. It's beautifully written. There's some lovely observations. It's one of those it tells you without telling you. And I just started reading Hotel du Lac, which I'll probably talk about next week. But in a way, it goes along beautifully with that as well. It's about this character, Mrs. Palfrey, who moves into this hotel in London called the Claremont. And it's, it's like it's one. It's all. It's not a care home, but it's where people go before they need a care home. So when they're retired and they can't live with their family, but they've got uh, enough money to um, pay for them to reside at a hotel, that's where they go. And it's just how Mrs. Palfrey fits into it, and how she gets on or not with some of the other residents, and it's got. It's got some very interesting moments. I absolutely loved it. I want to read more of Elizabeth Taylor's books. I highly, highly recommend that. So these there's a range of books. Graham Bartlett's book is one that is literally just out. Claire Powell's was out, I think, last year, 2022. Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont was out in 1972. So there's a range of publication dates there for you. And the last book I want to tell you about, again, one I absolutely loved. It's called A Bookshop of One's Own by Jane Cholmley. And I listened to this as an audiobook. It's nonfiction and it's narrated by the author Jane herself. And you know when you get an audiobook that you just want to keep listening to. And so you instead of listening to the radio or watching something on YouTube, you're just like, I need to listen to this. And wherever I went, I listened to it. And despite the fact that I was feeling really ill and having to drive my son to school because my husband was away, I felt so oh. ill. It it just helped having this to listen to. I absolutely adored it. So what is this about? It's about a bookshop that was set up some years ago in London and it was called Silver Moon. And it was the sort of the biggest women's bookshop in Europe. And it's a story. Yes, I learned a lot about the bookshop and the highs and lows of running a bookshop. But I also learned a lot about the feminist movement. I learned a lot about sort of lesbian fiction. I just it was brilliant. And do you know 
what it really made me realise, and sh- I do, f- I do feel ashamed about this, is that I haven't really read any books on the women's prize long list or short list before. I've always thought it wasn't for me that it was probably too highbrow, or I don't know. I, I am ashamed to admit it, but yeah, I'll be honest, I have avoided it up to now. And listening to Jane talk about how that women's prize started and how they were involved in the sort of the consultation for that, it stopped me in my tracks. And it's fair to say now I am, I'm hoping. I'd love to read every book on that long list. There are 16 books just announced and I'll be telling you about those as the weeks go by. I'll certainly read as many as I can. They've got a non-fiction long list as well. Oh, could we just pause time so I could read those 16 as well? I may, I might wait for the shortlist to come out for the non-fiction and then have a go at those. But, you know, shame on me, but I'm, I'm doing it now late to the table, but I'm here. and. I just think the bookshop of one's own is an outstanding. All of the books this week are outstanding, um, but I'd really, really recommend it to you. I'm not always a nonfiction girl, but this was brilliant, very, very, very good. So then we come on to the final thing, which is a jigsaw. Now, I'd been influenced by someone I follow on Instagram, Rachel, and she had. I love a jigsaw. I love a jigsaw. Some of them I find are just too hard. And when you're looking and you can't do a single piece, you tend to get a bit cross. And a friend of mine, Catherine, had lent me one of her jigsaws where all the pieces are cut into different shapes, as in like the shape of an apple or a tree or, oh, that blew my mind. I couldn't, my little brain couldn't cope with that. So when I saw this on Instagram, this range of jigsaws called Happily, I thought, yeah, I like the sound of that. So I tried one and I think it was it was a stationary one. That's right. I tried the stationary one and I really enjoyed it. Yes, it still takes time. It's not simple. It's not done in half an hour and they're thousand pieces, but it was easier than some of the very, very complicated ones. And so I enjoyed the process of it. And I could listen to an audio book while I was doing it and just have a lovely time. So when I'd done this jigsaw, I then thought, oh, I'm going to follow Happily Jigsaws and see what other jigsaw puzzles they've got. And hello, they followed me back and they said, oh, we've got a book jigsaw. Would you like us to send it to you? And I was like, Oh my goodness, yes, but I know I'm very, very lucky. So they sent it to me and while I have been poorly, I've been doing a bit of it. I couldn't do much of it to start with because I couldn't sort of lean over the table. Um, But now I can and I've just finished it and I thoroughly loved it. And they've offered me, it doesn't benefit me, but there's a 10% off code if you're interested. I'll put it in the show notes. Please don't feel obliged, but if you'd uh, you know, like to make use of it, please do. As I say, it doesn't benefit me. I did get sent the jigsaw for free, but I'm not induced to recommend it to you. And you know me, I give you my faves and I give you my flops. This was not a flop. I really enjoyed doing it. The book one I love because there's a lot of books that are well known, but they've all got different cover designs. And you think, oh, this is going to be something I'm going to whisk through again in half an hour because each book is a different colour. But it's not that simple. It's still challenging, but doable, if you know what I mean. I just really enjoy doing it. So there we go. Those are your books and your book Jigsaw. I've loved everything this week. And again, huge apologies to Graham for not able to do the interview. I'm really sorry, Graham, and hope to have you on again. So let's just have a quick recap of the books before I send you on your way. We have City on Fire by Graham Bartlett. We have At the Table by Claire Powell. We have Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont by Elizabeth Taylor. And we have A Bookshop of One's Own by Jane Cholmley. That was an audio book that I listened to. And finally, we had the Happily jigsaw puzzle, the classics edition, which is books. And there'll be a link in the show notes to that. So that's it. I'm off to cough. I hope you're okay. I hope you haven't got whooping cough. Please don't get it. It's horrible. 
and just look after yourselves and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the QuickBook Reviews podcast. That's enough books, said no one, ever. See you again soon.